I'm going to cut the roof on now so the first thing I need to do is set my square up the roof that I'm pitching is 32 degrees so this is a, my old roofing square my new one as I say is much more simple and it will work in a similar fashion so I collect I connect up my fence to my striking point and 32 degrees it's just like that there we go that's now set at the roof pitch at 32 degrees okay so now I'm going to show you my calculator this is the beta version so this is the programmers version it's not the version that you'll actually see but there's effectively my roof slope I know what my span is so my span which is outside of plate is in my case over there 1722 so I'm going to pop that into the calculator let me see if you can see this I'm going to pop that into the calculator 1722 also it's now asking me for the ridge thickness I'm using a piece of ridge which is 45 millimeters so I'll pop that in as well 45 millimeters and the angle of my roof 32 then I'm going to press calculate and my rafter length is 988 mil I'll write that down 988 so that's that so that's my rafter length all I need to do now is get a rafter I'll get a piece of timber I'll take a nice straight one because this will be this will be a template of course we'll put that on there we'll mark a plumb cut at the top right on the end here There's my plumb cut, I'll write PC there. And I'll measure my rafter length right off the end because that's why I did it on the end. So hook the tape on, 988. I'm gonna go 988 there. Another plumb cut there. We have it there. Now I'm gonna mark my bird's mouth, which is effectively a third of the height of the timber this is quite simple because these are 120 so it's 80 two thirds is 80 and then I just that was the plumb cut I slide it along that's my seat cut now I'm also going to be marking my drop on here and cutting my plumb cuts off because there's no soffit there's no fascia it has a tilting fillet so I can do that here and the total distance from the top of the wall plate so the bottom of the plumb cut point is 400 mil. I'll do that by stepping off. So there's 150. There's 300. And then I want to be 100. So that's the overall drop. Plumb cut here. And that is my rafter. It's going to be cut there going to be cut here and it's going to be cut here now I need eight of those but two of them are fixed where there is no OSB sheathing so I'm um, two of them I'm going to take off 11 millimeters so I've got two lots here and that 11 millimeters will mean that there are a two to be cut like that and six to be cut like that so I'm going to break those out and we'll get those in
These are the first two with the short bird's mouth. Just cut these out, put them out of the way, adjust that one and cut the rest. Cut the two with the, the different bird's mouths. So I'm now just going to adjust that template back to what it should be and cut the rest. Now set this, mark those all up, try and space them all out to do them all together. There we go. It's the quickest way to do it. Straight off the bat. We always keep the tops flush. If you're doing plasterboarding on the underside, sometimes you might want to keep the underside flush, but generally speaking, we like the top or the batten side of the roof to be lovely and true. But more and more now, when you get a regularized timber like this, so that it doesn't really make a lot of difference, it's lovely and even. Regularized is simply where they guarantee or supposedly guarantee that they are the same thickness as opposed to a nominal thickness which basically means you get what you're given when i started out four by two could have been four inches three and seven eighths four and an eighth basically it was potluck whereas now with the advent of regularized timber like this it's much more engineered and they also round the edge off which is a little bit more friendly when you're working with it, you get less splinters, but sometimes it's awkward when you measure and mark, you'll find that sometimes it's a bit long or even a bit short. Okay, so they're all marked. Put that one to one side, that's one of them. We'll wallop all these off. <coughs> Let's cut all of those plums first. Really nasty knot there. So since I was last here filming, we were cutting the roof on and it was getting rainy and it was getting late and the battery on the camera ran out halfway through filming and because it doesn't have a light on the camera, I didn't know anything about that. So I missed a bit of the footage and also we didn't capture any of the roof being tiled, but we'll be doing some tiling later on in the year. I will give you the headlines. So it's a clay tile. 
It's a really nice tile and we've got a purpose-made valley tile. We've got the same matching ridge and it just looks absolutely fantastic. Okay, it's not a dry ridge system, this one. This is a cemented ridge to match the rest. So I'm gonna make some doors now for here and it's all insulated right the way through. So it's really nice and warm to keep this from freezing in the winter. And as I said a bit earlier, not getting warm in the summer. We don't want the water inside there to get warm. All kinds of issues could arise when water gets warm, but it's not my subject. I'm no specialist, but someone in the comments below is bound to tell me all about it. So thanks for that in advance. Anyhow, I'm gonna use, um, I've got some CLS left, which is what I use for the frame of this. So Canadian lumber, Canadian lumber standard. I'm gonna knock up my frames out of that. Now they're gonna be a bit like a ledged embraced door. So a ledged embraced door is basically cladding top to bottom with some structure on the back, which is ledges and braces. But I'm gonna do it slightly differently. I'm gonna make a frame I'm going to insulate in the in between, so I'm going to clad the outside, have a simple frame, and then I'm going to insulate inside the doors as well with some 25mm PIR, which will just also add some thermal qualities to these doors. So I'm going to get on with that now, rip some timber down, and we'll see how we get on. So I'm using this CLS. I've just ripped these styles down, if you like, and I've got my cross pieces, which are all the same. Now, the styles I've ripped down for one reason. A, I can get a screw. In fact, this sounds like two reasons coming up. There's two reasons. First of all, I can put a nice screw through into the ends of these CLSs. So if I'd have kept it at that thickness, it would have been super long screws and I prefer the screws to be really well held there. So that's the first thing I'm going to screw through there. Secondly, the final width is exactly half a sheet of PIR. So all I've got to do is cut the sheet down the middle and they'll fit. So it was just a matter of if I had reduced these styles any less, I've made them 60 mil. If I'd have made them 50 mil, half a sheet wouldn't have been enough. I'd have been able to have to put a strip in one side. So it's worth thinking ahead about the material that you're using, especially when you use insulation or something like that. So that simple adjustment meant that I'm gonna make a good yield out of my insulation board. So I'm gonna screw these together, make these frames up, and then I'm gonna brace them all square, clad them, and then we'll start hanging the doors. So I've got the frames together, just going to hold them square and then set them in the opening to set out the cladding. I'm just putting a brace on the back. That will keep it nice and square until everything's on. Put that one out of the way. Turn this one over and brace it. I'm using my saw as a really nice flat assembly table. Look at that. And it's sort of extendable so I can get it forwards and backwards. Let's get another little brace. Let's go the other way. <clears throat> it's a bit of a chilly old day today. The sky's a little bit questionable, but we just march on and just keep going regardless. We don't mind a little bit of cold weather. It's when it's raining. So, Grimbo. <coughs> oh, lovely. Using some all different screws at the moment. But this, this is a new sort of brand, Forge Fast, new to me. And um, they got some seriously good screws, bloody good value too. So check them out when you get a chance. Tool station. Oh, it's not their brand, but they do it. Anyway, that's that. So I've got a pair of those now. Now I'm using a cladding, which is redwood. 
it's it's beautiful i mean it's um redwood is basically what we use for joinery quite a lot of the time it's a tongue and groove redwood just hold it like that it's really clean it hasn't got a lot of knots in it it will have knots but it hasn't got a lot of knots in it this particular piece and it's pretty thick as well so it's sort of x 25 mil finishes about 22 and the idea is it's going to be clad all over the face yeah top to bottom and it will just look absolutely brilliant just pinned on as per normal dovetail pins and it will look the business so i'm going to get on now set those out clad them up I'm going to just try them in. I'm going to set a rod out for the cladding over the tops and then I'm going to clad them on the bench. So first of all, I've allowed six millimetres everywhere. So six at either side and six down the middle. So I'm going to put them in with a couple of six mil spacer blocks here so I can push them up against and some underneath. So if I just pin these on temporarily, Perfect. Come all down the bottom. They can stay there till I hang them. And then I want to just put one in the middle there where they sit. Then we can set the frames in. So we'll just pop that one in there. And the other side. That's the kitty. Now we'll set a rod across the middle of this i think we'll just let's pop it in there and set it here ah, simple rod now the idea is i'm going to use this cladding all the way through these doors going to come up underneath this drip and the top cladding is going to hang down to it so anything will come off run down and go off the bottom and this cladding will go right over to the corner posts that are going to go on to here as well so what I need to do is work from the middle and back so I've got to decide whether I have cut the tongue and the groove off and have a narrower section here or I try to match the outsides well let's see how it works out the cover of these boards, the cover means, from what you see when they're pushed together, is 115. The moisture content of these boards is quite high. It means it's going to shrink. So for this instance, I'm going to push them up fairly tight, knowing that in the summer they're going to go. So if I did them, if I allowed a couple of mil now in the summer, they're, you may be able to see through them. We don't want that. Right, let's get that set out. That's the door, that's the edge of the opening there. And this is the edge of the opening here. And then we've got our centre here. I'm going to cut myself an off cut of this. I'm just going to rough it in first just to see how it works out. I could do this by measuring, but sometimes it's just easier to offer the material in and see it in real life. Okay, so that's going to be a bit iffy. I don't really want to run half a rip down there. So what I need to do is share that between this board and this board. 
Well, the alternative is to run a full board through this way. I'm going to sight this up now. It's chilly today. Need to get some soup. That's the best thing to warm us up. And that would give us almost like a full board down the middle. Split, obviously. But I don't like that so much. I'm going to split the difference. I'm going to take from there. That's coming to there, so I'm going to reduce some. So I'm going to have a rip here, a rip here, a rip here, and a rip there. So these, these are the subframes of my doors, and this one's cladded already. And how I do that is I start by putting, in this case, a central piece of cladding down. That all depends on how many pieces is covering. And then I've got two equal rips either side, so it just looks a little bit more centralized. And these two doors are exactly the same. The doors go right the way up and form their own rebate against this head section and also over the concrete plinth. So they're really nice and secure and fairly airtight. So now we're going to clad this one. I'm going to lay it on that pallet there. I know which is the top and the bottom. I'll just pop it down here. So I've got my cladding here and it's a matter of putting the cent centre one on. I'm leaving them long and I'm going to trim them off with a rail saw afterwards. Um, my subframes are nice and square. We checked those a minute ago. So I can pretty much work to them. That's absolutely lovely. So we'll get the first one fixed in the middle. This is a nice straight board. I thought I'd use a straight board to start with because everything can work itself out of that. And that's nice. Just final check here. Let's get a pin in there. Pop one in this end. Make sure it's nice and straight. Perfect. Now we just keep cladding that either side. What I like to do is put a board either side. So I'm fixing a pair. You could put them all across, but the only trouble with that is you want to see where your, your fixings are. Sort of here, here, and this is just a nicer way of doing it. Otherwise you, you're guessing. And you can push up any bow or bend. And then we've got the rips either side. This side first, nice and straight. So I'm gonna pop that in. And the door wants to be 727 overall. So if I whack this one in as well, we can just check what we've got at the moment and how much we've got to take off. So currently, I've got about 800. So I want 727, so I've got to take 73 off, which is around about 36 off of this one first. So we'll take that 36 off first, off there. 
pop that on the saw. Thirty-six. So that's the blade thickness for me. So we're going to go thirty-two. We can fix that one in. Now we can measure exactly the other side, 727, from that new perfect edge. And that gives me a nice rip of 78. And this time, we don't need to allow for the blade. touch over, give myself something to shoot in. So that's it, that's ready to be trimmed now. So what we need is 20 mil at the top, which is past the frame to lap over onto this rebate. So we'll do that first. Check that for square. I'll pop that on there. on my lines, then I'll get my new roofing square and we'll stick him, stick him down the side here. It's absolutely lovely. So we can cut that off there. Perfect. Now the height, which is the same as this door, obviously. Just gonna check it. 1700. Let me whiz that off. That's the doors trimmed to height, width, ready to go in. Let's see how they fit.
lovely job, absolutely perfect. So I've got them nice and tight, so I'm going to hang them tight like this and then I'm going to be able to put a plane down there and just ease them in because this, all this is going to do is shrink because it's so moist, it's got a high moisture content at the moment, it's probably not long been treated, so that's perfect. Let's get the hinges on and away we go. That's this pair of doors virtually finished. I'm going to be insulating these panels here. And basically then I'll probably put a sheath of ply over the back, which will keep them really nice and rigid instead of having a diagonal brace. Alternatively, I'll put the insulation in and then I'll simply fix a brace across the back anyway, because it's just a store and it's absolutely perfect. So that was a nice little job. I enjoyed doing that. Just um, nice and simple and pleasing. I'll probably put a rebate strip on the outside of here. I'll put a bolt on the inside of one, a rebate strip on here, and then I expect I'll use a gate mate lock because they're pretty damn good. So the next thing for me will be, I'm just gonna finish these corners here, put a corner post in, clad the sides of this building, do the little gable, and we're there, but for now, I'm going home.